Valorant coaching, is it worth paying that pretty penny in order to actually hire a coach and train you up? Well, I never went through the experience until today and I'm about to give you my full thoughts thanks to the coach Dopai who is trying to do educational content on his YouTube channel, all his socials down below, but let's get into this. So the first thing that happened during our coaching session is he got to know me. Do you have like a couple agents that you like normally main or like what do you typically gravitate yes. towards? Yes, so for like, do I usually like to play duelist, so either let's say Jet Reina Yoru more Yoru and Reina uh, and if we need to play smokes I'll play Omen. Perfect so you have a nice uh, agent pool there all, all of those people share the same kit in terms of flashes which mm -hmm. I love um, that definitely probably dominates your playstyle. Now truth be told I'm just giving you guys snippets but this guy asked for my sense what mouse I use what products like he went all out my, my mouse grip like everything was on the table he was analyzing me before we even started and what I realized is that this coaching session was way beyond my expectations it was only the first round 0-0 zero, zero, 10 seconds in and he had 20 minutes worth of information to give based off of one minute mistake I made. I noticed that you don't put your TP down at the pre-round. Okay, so I'll, I'll go back already after this round, but there's a couple things I noticed. So the first thing I noticed, obviously, is you don't use your teleport. Um, mm -hmm. The reason why this is kind of tough is just because it doesn't let you go for an aggressive play. So one of the main things I like to emphasize on uh, Icebox is really this close A fight here, uh, if you take a look at the mini map. Mm -hmm. um, and what that will look like is either you push top pipes, you go for the duel here, so maybe you jump on top of here. If they get past this, this point here where the orb is, it's very hard for you actually to hold the site. Because if you think about the crossfire here, is like you could play a guy in this corner here, or you could play the guy like a little bit to the right here, and that's your crossfire. So the way you kind of control A and like quote unquote hold down A site, it's not really to play on site but actually to play in front of site yeah literally i got specific icebox tips right off of the bat but this guy goes into insane detail across the entire game mechanic and we'll get into it right after this this sponsor is an extremely unique one sizzle.gg this extraordinarily unique sponsor is a powerful free to use highlight tool but instead of just highlighting your gameplay it's actually created for streamers people who stream to youtube people who stream to twitch you can have it connected and then it'll automatically take your stream and cut it down to the best and most highlighted moments. So yeah, instead of shifting through your own VOD, you can sign up for free and without any software download. Yeah, you heard me right. All through the website, you can connect your Twitch or YouTube and then just go live. It'll automatically find your detected live stream. You click a game, it'll start highlighting based off of that game. It'll know, let's say, what kills are Fortnite kills, what kills are Valorant kills. And by the end of it, give you a nice little processed video for you to share to TikTok or as a dedicated edited video insane this is extremely useful sizzle.gg supported by a ton of games and best of all to celebrate the community they're hosting a free to enter giveaway all you have to do is use the link down below and create a sizzle.gg account link your twitch or youtube and there you go you're entered to win 30 dollars straight to your paypal there'll be two winners make sure to check out sizzle.gg down below so what i quickly noticed is that he was able to give me specific tips not only on icebox and then yoru but also general tips so this next clip at the very end he talks about pacing and it it was an amazing eye-opening segment because what he's basically referring to is I either play too aggressive or too defensive without mixing up the playstyles correctly. And he found a perfect example of when I should mix in pacing with the minimap. Just watch this. Okay, so <laughs> uh, let's talk on this retake real quick, right? You don't use your TP here, which I don't think is a huge problem. But you go with decoy first. The problem with decoy first, I think, is that it's kind of obvious that it's not you. It's like if you throw your TP somewhere first to prep the retake, Either you throw it deep, like you want towards yellow, you have an option to go aggressive later in the round. Or if you want, you can just keep it like right click one in kitchen. So if you get into a hectic situation, you can TP out, right? Mm -hmm. So I would say start by throwing your TP. And similar to offense, start by throwing your TP. Um, the second thing is when you go here, right, your decoy gets shot. You know the arena, or I guess not the arena, but this guy yellow just died because your teammate killed him. Um, and then like this guy just finished planting bomb. I would 100% take the risk here and jump on top of this wall and kill this mm -hmm. guy yep. Because you see that no one's holding you right? Okay, and then you go for this really good play here with the jump flash somehow It doesn't blind on this guy. I guess it went a little bit fast or like behind or something But you get the kill on this guy regardless. Okay, so at this point look mini map We know the chamber went left side. We saw the question mark We know the viper is in mid somewhere and your teammate scan is going uh, right side So we see him toward the main here and you throw the flash here boom we actually don't know he's crossed, right? Because we're looking into the wall. But I think you play this 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 point really well. And the thing I want to emphasize here is your scaling timing is kind of off, right? After you get this kill, you should wait. Yep. Right now you're pushing up, <laughs> yeah, you're going yeah. really quick. Yep. And like 
you're not really tradable here. So he get, he gets this really good timing, honestly. So I actually called it scaling timing, but the next big thing is definitely the mini map. So he pointed out that it was my weakness and it's crazy because every time he points out a weakness, it just clicks. I know it's a weakness. He's not calling me out of something random. It's something he can tell based off of the gameplay and game sense more than straight raw mechanics, which I found impressive. All right, so you should expect this guy to be right side, which you do. You throw a decoy, you scale through, you get this kill. Boom, perfectly played. Now you reload, look at minimap. We see, mm. and I guess you could just see this guy through the wall. But now we actually see three people on minimap. Oh, no. Sage got scanned, Chamber's looking up. Phoenix is actually top nest. And I, I missed that completely. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's really tough to really see in the moment, but like this guy <laughs> ends up making the backside <laughs> shooting, shooting you, right? So when you have downtime, just quick look on the minimap and you get so much info and I like to kind of call it as like the minimap will tell you exactly how to play the game. The minimap will tell you how to play the game. This is one of the quotes I really like because I think it points out a lot of my issues when it comes to game sense and it would probably fix a lot of those issues just as fast if I had my eyes on the minimap more often. Best of all is the ability for coaches to tie everything together. So if we take my poor pacing and my lack of minimap, it ends up costing me a huge mistake where I don't push an enemy when I should. And he points it out and predicts the future of that round based off of my decision before he even watched the game. Yeah, you would you would push this guy. You're playing this a little bit too safe. I'll go back in a second and explain why, but let's see how this goes. Hit TP. Yep. There's the mid lurk. Mid yep. I want to get out, but it went bad, I think. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> that would have been a god play. Okay, so okay, back here we we see this Viper looking in. He actually kills our brimstone here. You, we know that this guy's stuck by the tube because your so was fighting it. Immediately you need to be killing this guy, right? You throw a clone, throw a flash, maybe you just run up and take the duel. But what ends up happening is just because you leave this guy is he gets the lurk later, right? You know, you're running through, you left this guy in mid, of course he's just gonna yeah, wait and let you guys run sense. by. And then he kills, I want to say Reyna in a second. Boom, Reyna dies, right? Now I can't speak to all coaches, but I'm going to point out for this coach specifically, what Dopai does correctly is I think he mixes my strengths and weaknesses together. So he is open to say, oh, you did something good. He's open to complimenting the person he's coaching, but will still point out the weaknesses within your strength just to make sure your strength gets that much stronger. It's a good thing. Oh, thank you. I almost got the second one too. <laughs> the way. Damn, NT. You, you definitely have a habit of using your clone more than your flash, I would say. Yeah. Um, not saying the clone is bad, but maybe pair them. Like, throw your throw your clone and then throw mm. the flash behind it. Maybe you wouldn't throw it in front. You could throw it, like, um, behind you like this. Yep. And, like, peek with it or something. But at the very least, layer your flash at some point. And I think that this example kind of continues forward. He's not afraid to hype you up, which is extremely important. I think that positivity allows someone to kind of approach coaching with a much more open mind and absorb the information that's given back to them. Mm -hmm. Um, After you get the kill here and your random runs in and dies in a second, boom, you get this kill. You should reevaluate, honestly. And this yep. guy right here dies. Yep. Brimstone's gone. Silva's <laughs> mid fighting. This chamber is like, at this point, pushing up here doesn't net you anything. Yep. Um, so I would honestly just leave. But It's that brain lag on not looking on the map <laughs> that caused all of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The mini map is so big. There's a, yeah. <laughs> nice shot. I was going to say, you. there is a world this guy pushes and you get value and it immediately happens. So, <laughs> okay. So in this situation, going B would be the safest. But I would actually double up your chamber here just to make sure this guy doesn't die for free. Mm -hmm. So you actually do go for the safest, smarter play, right? If this guy dies, technically it's a 3v2, you guys win it. But mm -hmm. I'd rather just go mid, bait this guy, he dies, and then make it a 3v1, and then TP back to B. Throwing the TP aggressive here probably isn't the play either. Maybe <laughs> throwing a deep ghost. snowman That's assigned. what it's supposed to do. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I missed. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, they're both there. Oh, fake TP. Oh my god, you're so ballsy holding this. Woo! <laughs> and you get the kill. Oh my god, nice round. I actually wouldn't be taking any of these fights because you're low <laughs> HP. I would just be yeah, looking for flashes. And it was stupid because I didn't even use my YouTube. <laughs> it was stupid. But hey, yeah. hey, hey, you know, if you win those, you win those. We take those. The next thing is he analyzed my uh, aiming through a deathmatch as well as some aim training in the range. And man, does he go into detail. Claw grip, what's your sensitivity, that you aim too tense, elbow or wrist. It's crazy. Sure. Thank you. Actually, that's... I like to think so. I, I was actually kind of crazy the first time and then I saw it. That's hilarious. Uh-huh, like literally, right? Yeah, like, that's actually wild. I love the luck there. <laughs> you have really good uh, gun hygiene in deathmatch. Like right there, right? And you're just not insta-shooting. You go for the mm -hmm. readjustment. I noticed that in game two is like when you were on belt, you actually like didn't go for the insta-crouch. <laughs> and you really actually do go for the insta-crouch. 
So yeah, I think your gunfight hygiene is high level. So basically for my coach session, I like how he broke down my pros and cons. Basically, he said that my game sense is exactly where it deserves, so around plot or low diamond, but on the flip side, my aiming is probably high ascendant, and I obviously appreciated that. And he basically said just by adjusting the fact that I don't use the minimap well enough and I don't pace myself well enough, either too aggressive or too defensive, I can fix those, train those, and climb the ranks by just doing that. He was able to give me a summary after an hour and a half coaching session. So overall, is coaching worth it? And I believe the answer to this question is a little bit nuanced, but let me explain. And the reason it's nuanced is because I think if you really want to get amazing at Valorant, you need more than one coaching session because with only one game, he can evaluate my Yoru gameplay on Icebox, but not much else. Now, to be fair, I can use this one coaching session and take the main, main points, like stuff like the minimap, stuff like pacing and all the other tips and apply them immediately. So even one coaching session is worth it, but with only one being completed, you're still gonna have to do a lot of self-studying and you can only, you basically can only learn as much as you're willing to. Meaning I was very open-minded. I let him talk the entire time. I took mental notes. I was completely involved in it. If you aren't engaged within the coaching itself, basically if you couldn't make it to the end of this video, coaching is most likely already not for you, right? All the people who clicked away mid midway aren't super engaged in the idea or the context of coaching. And in that sense, it won't be worth it because you're not going to absorb the information correctly. So it's a two-part question. Yes, it is worth it once if you just want a general broad evaluation on yourself and your gameplay. And it's worth multiple times if you really, really, really want to improve in Valorant and take everything extremely seriously. Hope you guys enjoyed.